In this video, we'll go through an example of solving a second order differential equation with constant coefficients. So we'd like to find the general solution for this differential equation. And we call that the general solution has a, a complementary solution, which we've denoted by y sub c, which is a solution to the homogeneous equation. So when this is equal to zero, and a particular solution, which is a solution to the non-homogeneous equation. So when this is not equal to zero, we'll begin by finding the complementary solution. Which is the solution to this differential equation. And as before, we're going to guess that the solution has the form of an exponent, which will leave us with an auxiliary equation. In this case, taking the second derivative leaves us with lambda squared. And uh, this just leaves us with a four for our auxiliary equation. This has to be equal to zero. The roots of this equation are when lambda one and two is equal to plus or minus two i. So we have uh, what we call case two, where the roots are complex. Which means that our complementary solution has the general form e to the i uh, to the uh, 2ix plus c2 minus 2ix. This is because the roots to our scalar equation were complex. Now to find the particular solution, we need to look at what form our term on the right has. In this case, the term on the right was given by sine 2x, which satisfies uh, case three over here, this form, where b is equal to zero because we don't have a cosine term. And if you look over here, uh, to figure out the value of r, we need to look at this case over here. It says r is equal to zero if i beta is not a root of the auxiliary equation or is equal to one if i beta is a root of the auxiliary equation. In this case, i beta, where beta was two, in this case was a root of the auxiliary equation. So r is equal to one. And what that means, we're finding our particular solution. And according to our table, we guess a solution of the form A, where this is just a constant, sine two X plus BX cosine two x, where b is another constant. And from the table, the value of beta that was inside the argument of sine is the same as what you had over here for the roots of the, uh, of the auxiliary equation. So what you do then is once you have the form, the general form for the particular solution, is you plug it into your differential equation. So you plug it back in here and you match terms on both sides. So whatever the second derivative of a particular solution is plus four times that solution, it has to equal sine two x. 
what you get when you carry this out. You get this in the left-hand side, 4b times cos 2x minus 4a sine 2x. And this has to equal to the right-hand side, which is sine 2x. For these two sides to match, you need b equal to zero so that the cosine term goes away because there's no cosine term on this side. And you need a to be equal to minus a quarter because you wanna be left with one uh, multiplying the sign. So we go back to our initial guess and plug in the values for A and B that we determined. And we're left that the particular solution to our differential equation is minus x over four sine two x. So this leaves us with a general solution, which is the complementary solution plus the particular solution. From C1 to the ix plus C2 to the minus 2ix. So this was our complementary solution. plus our particular solution that we found over here. And C, C1 and C2 are just constants. And these can be found by specifying specific conditions for Y at some value, initial value of X, let's say it's equal to Y naught. And because you have a second order differential equation, you need two conditions. You also need a condition on the derivative of y evaluated at some initial value of x, which we call y naught prime, for example. So if you're given these two values, you can find specific uh, C1, a specific value for C1 and C2. In the absence of uh, this information, then this just gives us our general solution to this differential equation. So this is how you apply the uh, techniques of the previous two videos for finding a complementary and the particular solution. There's another very powerful method uh, that involves Laplace transforms that is useful under uh, certain specific conditions and becomes extremely powerful when you have discontinuous uh, functions uh, in the right-hand side of your differential equation. So this term has discontinuities. And we'll see how to, uh, we'll begin how to, how to do that in the next video when we introduce the Laplace transform.